In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the iShares S&P TSX 60 Index ETF. The ticker symbol is XIU. Now, this is a very good ETF that you could look into yourself as well. But today, we're going to be breaking it down, seeing what it really does for us as investors. And also, basically, its performance as well. Let's get down. Let's check it out. So basically, it's going to be giving you exposure to the larger companies on the TSX. And of course, it is a very liquid ETF in Canada, which basically means that the volume, the, the trading volume is very, very high. In fact, its average volume is 2.2 million shares on average or sorry, 2.2 million shares over the last day. The average volume is over 3 million shares traded every single day. So if you're looking to get in and out of an ETF, this may be the ETF for you. It is currently being traded at $26.96 at the time of making this video. And its current yield is 3%. So why would this be a good option for us? We can look at other ETFs that are paying more money. Why would this be a good ETF? Well, it's going to be essentially the 60 largest companies on the TSX. I think the actual total is 62. So this is an ETF that's going to be holding a broad range of, of different companies. Now, what is huge on the TSX? Well, some of the biggest companies on the TSX is oil companies, rail companies, and banks. Those are essentially three of the biggest segments of the market that currently are on the TSX. Why is this important? Well, the, the Canadian banks have paid a dividend for over a hundred years, which is why they are a fantastic investment. Another reason is oil. Oil is going up right now, and I think that it's going to continuously go up throughout this year. The reason why is because producers have really cut down on how much volume of oil that they are mining because everyone is staying at home. So once everyone starts getting back onto the road, traveling, air travel, and everything else, once the vaccines come out, I really think that oil is going to start spiking up quite high. So I think that the later half of this year, the actual TSX is going to be outperforming what it did in the first half of this year so that's why i'm really breaking this etf down so its distribution frequency is not as much as what we would look at some of the bmo etfs the bmo a lot of the bmo etfs do pay monthly this one does pay quarterly so what does that mean for us as investors what that means for us is we're not getting paid every single month so you if you are looking at this as an investment that will give you a a guaranteed income every month you really need to start budgeting your money because then you would have to budget your money instead of every month you would have to budget it every three months this is also the reason why I like to look into not just one single ETF for myself but multiple but this is a very good base for your portfolio in my opinion also, the management fees are kind of low, pretty low in my opinion, considering that we can look at other ETFs like the BMO ETFs are in anywhere from really low 0 0.09 all the way up to a 0.7, a 0.8 when it comes to some of their covered calls. Well, obviously because it's options, but when it comes down to it, a 0.15 or 0.18 uh, MER is really kind of low. So when you start really comparing this to mutual funds, the MER is really low and versus a mutual fund that could be as high as one and a half, 1.8 or 2 point something percent. And the risk, risk is medium according to their indicator, which is the same as a lot of different mutual funds. This is why I kind of like ETFs a lot better than mutual funds. Now, the nice thing with this, with this ETF is the wide range of companies that it does hold. So Shopify is a large, large holding, and I'm going to say that the Shopify network may take a slight hit once the in-store shopping starts up back again, but there, the future is all online. And I'm saying that right now, even as a, as a millennial, 
the future of shopping is online. Everyone's going to be shopping online soon. Obviously, grocery shopping, that's not going to happen, but that's already starting slightly. I personally just prefer to buy my groceries myself. But we have the banks. Royal Bank of Canada and TD, massive, massive companies with dividends that have been paid for over 100 years without reducing their dividend. They have kept their dividend the same for years at a time like back in 2008, but they never decreased their dividend. So they are a very solid dividend pair. CNR is also a very good dividend payer. It is a railroad co or a rail company, but something to remember about CN Rail is they don't just do grain, they also do a lot of oil. Oil shipping is huge. And Enbridge is an oil energy type company. We have, are going back to financials for a lot. And then we're getting down to Canadian Pacific Railway, which is again a rail company. And then Barrett Gold. Will gold outperform this year like it did last year? Who knows? But if this coronavirus continues to go on, if there's more evolutions of this virus and they keep on shutting us down, then I would assume that gold is going to go higher, just like Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin a good investment? Investment? That's totally up to you. I am not going to make a comment on Bitcoin. And as I was mentioning, financials and energy are huge in this ETF. Industrials, which is rail, is also up there as well. Information technology is the future, so of course that is hedging against the future there. And there's a lot of other great things, like communication. Now, that's going to get disrupted very soon by Elon Musk's SpaceX, so... I would assume right now that communication at 5.7% is not a massive risk, but again, with the Starlink satellites, that is going to get disrupted quite largely. Now this is the chart since its inception. Now this was 2008, and of course this was that massive drop off when we had that massive recession. We again have had that drop off again roughly close to the same amount in this ETF, but what can we see? Well, this ETF recovered quite nicely up to close to where it was at. It dipped slightly and recovered past its initial starting point. So if you were to invest right now, what will happen? Will this go back down slightly before it explodes higher? It possibly could. I still think that that's a possibility with the market, but at the same time, how I like to invest, and I'm getting my dad to invest right now as well, it's his retirement. Don't go all in right at first. Buy small amounts. Buy maybe 100 shares here and 100 shares there, because if it goes up, then you're still making that money. But if it does go down, you can average lower and then get in with more shares and then have it rise again. You never want to go all in at once. You want to buy small increments at a time, whatever small is to you, so that you can average lower if it does go lower. I hope that this video has helped you. If it has, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.